we're in the staff stand. That's hard to say. We're in the staff stand, and we're at Domatex USA. It's day number one. I'm with David Ford. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So far, so good. It's just getting started, so I'm excited about it. What are your expectations for this show? My expectations are for it to hopefully that it would uh, give the opportunity for the people on the East Coast a place to come to that uh, you know that we're not we're not dragging everything always out to the West Coast and that it would honestly take over as as well as you know as take take as much time as Surfaces has and 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 kind of fill the void that's out over here on the East Coast. I see. So you think eventually it will draw people from the West Coast? I don't know if it will or not. I sure I, that would be I'd be great if it did, but I don't know if I don't know if it will for sure. So your feeling about going to two major shows a year? Um, did the jury still out on that? I think so. I think what we decided at first was uh, let's let's go to either or and see what happens, and then we'll. Uh, hopefully, you know, us being a European-based type of company, they're used to doing Domitex Hanover as a regular. Um, so they were have a, they have high expectations for, uh, you know, uh, Domitex here in the U.S. And I think them just getting started is just a uh, test the waters type of thing. And I think a lot of the distributors that are coming by are saying the same thing. They're saying, you know, we were going to come, we were going to come test the waters, we're going to see what that's about. And then if it if it turns out to be something bigger than what we think, then we're going to start setting meetings on a regular basis. But so far, uh, the response has been good, real good. How important is it that the Hanover people, the Domatex people out of Hanover are doing this show if it was to somebody else? Would you feel the same way about this show and about its its potential? No, probably not. I mean, probably because they've they've done it so well for so long, and uh, a lot of people know that it's a smooth, uh, oiled machine, and people know what to expect when they come to a to a to a Domitex show. So you go to Hanover, you go to Shanghai. Go to go to Hanover. Have not done. We have not done the uh, the uh, Shanghai um, and Europe has not done that yet. It's another emerging market that we've we've talked about, but we have jury still out on that too. Gotcha. Talk about the staff company and how that's changed over the last several years. I would say probably the staff company, as as you know, is almost a 200-year-old company, and the U.S. division is right now at about its 17th year. Um, we have introduced a lot of products that work for the United States. The company has grown as the, its own separate entity. Um, there have been uh, a lot of additions to the line. There's been a, a lot of additions to uh, a contractor base grade type products. And I think that, you know, our, our future is just, I think we're one of two or maybe three that are still just dedicated to flooring alone. Others have gone into the aerospace or automobile industry or, you know, we still focus on floor covering and always have. And we probably unique in that we still, uh, uh, this is becoming a, a changing market quickly, as you know. And uh, I know that some people have had uh, situations where they've gone direct to uh, retailers and uh, and that that type, but we're still very loyal to distribution, and we feel like they're valued partner. Now, the the industry at, in in general, the players that are in your business, I, it, it seems to me everybody is expanding in twelve di different ways in terms of products and maybe m markets as well. That's got to be a difficult a difficult situation for you and your competitors. Yeah, I think. Um, we try to we try to hit it by not only we address it by not by not only coming out with uh, adhesive products, but we're, we've also kind of branched out into actual uh, coatings um, division. So we have got things that are uh, as but behind you um, you'll see epoxy floor coatings, industrial type coatings. Um, we've been doing uh, a lot of aircraft hangers lately, really? so yeah. So I think that uh, as things as things change uh, in the in the vast landscape of floor covering, um, we felt like that we needed to as well. We didn't need to just uh, just stick with just adhesive, no pun intended, but 
really we needed to we needed to branch out. So this is our this is our first go, and then there are uh, many other things that we are looking at. You know, one thing I can say about Stauff is there's never a um, you know a downtime for uh, innovation. They're, they're always creating, thinking ahead. What's the next What's the next technology? So. Uh, I don't think we're ever running out of ideas, thanks, thanks to some pretty sharp people. Now, you can't, you can't take a step without somebody talking about the installation situation in this business, the shortage of qualified installers. How does that play when you guys are sit, sitting down to develop new products and new, new directions? How is, is, is that, and I'm going to talking about is making installation easier, more efficient, stuff like that. Is that something that's on, on the front of your mind? I think if you don't have products that are installer friendly, that are easier to use, um, it definitely makes the task uh, much more tedious and much more time consuming. So, uh, yeah, the shortfall of uh, good qualified installers, it, it's a problem. It really is a problem. Um, I have personal friends that have told me, you know, what they've reported on their income, and one of the things that they have, some of the things they have reported is that, you know, the uh, uh, the amount is, uh, you know, the, the, their their level of income is uh, exceedingly increased because of the opportunities that are out there. Because, uh, the, yeah, you can find people to install floors, but trying to find people to install floors and install them correctly is, yeah. I mean, that's, it's becoming a, it's becoming a more and more increased problem. I'd say that the average uh, guy on his knees is seven to 10 years, and then he's wanting to move on to something else. So um, the, our challenge as, a, as an adhesive company is to always get to the installer, and that's a difficult task too. Yeah. Especially when you're going through distribution. Distribution, they they'll call on the retailer. A lot of them don't call on someone who does not have a brick and mortar type of store. So uh, when they don't call on them, it's hard to get to the installer. So um, it's a constant. Uh, we're we're in the process. It's funny you ask this question because we're in the process right now of coming up with programs and ideas that are going to include the installer themselves. So it draws them into staff and to understand what we're about. One of the things that we've done to address that is we've started Staff University. Um, so every other month we have uh, two of our trainers. We have uh, distributors, retailers, installers in from all over the country. It's not a cost at all to the uh, uh, to, to them in any way. All they have to do is just get there. That's the only expense they have. We take care of everything and we train them through all of the aspects of, as, you know, sometimes as boring as it may be, um, all about adhesive and not just adhesive, but about yeah. about the floor covering, you know, what's going on out there right now, you know. So we, we try to address, uh, we try to get to the installer. That's the key thing that I'm trying to say is that we we know that the key is to, at the installer level. It's not at the distributor level. It's not at the retail level, because a lot of times that message doesn't get passed along. Yeah. Um, so we are really after that installer. Problem is, is just like you said, David. There's a, there's fewer and fewer of those guys out there. Well, you know, you were talking about them moving on, and it seems to me, from surveys that I've seen, the average age is somewhere in the mid 50s, yeah. and a lot of those bodies are getting worn out. So I mean that's a that's a problem, a big problem in a, in a short amount of time. Right. I think that uh, by the time that a guy has the the qualifications to actually learn and understand the type of floorings and floor coverings that are that, that keep emerging in the market, by the time he gets proficient at them, he's tired. Things hurt, you know. So he so 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 recruitment is really the answer. Getting you know young warm bodies into this industry nobody knows i mean i don't think the installers the the young the young guys younger guys who are coming up uh i don't think they understand or know what the opportunities are how much uh income there is available to be made and the the, the work can be you can set your own you set your own pace you know there's a lot of installers in this business that that are making you know, numbers with a lot of zeros involved in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've heard 
with, uh, you know, a couple of crews just in several markets, you know, guys making over three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. Maybe I'll start doing that. <laughs> if I weren't so, so clumsy, maybe I could. David, th thank you so much. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks for stopping. Yeah. We've been talking with David Ford. We're in the staff stand, which again is hard to say. We're at Domatex USA in Atlanta, and this is Top Floor TV.